Hello everybody and welcome to Under the Hood, the series where I take a look at early access games and let you know what I like and don't like about them and hopefully the developers listen and maybe they could take some of those opinions to heart or not. It's really up to you. Who knows? I'm not really a game developer anyway. Today we're taking a look at Catacomb Kids, the latest game in this ever-growing trend of roguelite games. Uh, and, and honestly, in this day and age, if you're going to create a, a roguelite, a roguelike, a rogue roguelike, a rogue roguelike, a rogue -like -like, you kind of have to differentiate yourself, right? There's a lot of really good ones out there, and if you create a subpar one, or even one that's even slightly worse than a really good one, the question then becomes, why don't I just go play that one instead? A, a few that come to mind is, or one in particular that comes to mind is A Wizard's Lizard. Um, a Wizard's Lizard was very Isaac-like and had a couple of differentiating factors, but I kept finding myself going, eh, I'd rather just play Isaac. So Catacomb Kibs comes along, and I've been I've heard a little bit about it from uh, Northern Lion and Bear Taffy and Rockly Smile, and uh, I decided to give it a shot. And I played a good chunk of it yesterday, and I have a lot of interesting thoughts on the game itself. It does a lot of cool, unique things that really not a lot of other roguelikes do. But there's a couple of sticking points that I I would like to bring up with the game itself. So let's start a new game. And this is how it begins. So, there's going to be six classes, but right now there are only two available. Uh, bully and Poet. And each one of these classes obviously comes with their own benefits and negatives. You can see on the right hand side what those are. So I'm going to play as a Bully, I'm going to have more strength, which means I'm going to be able to start with a little bit more health. I'm going to do a little bit more damage, and I come with some special taunts. Uh, but I'm going to have lower defense and lower magic. And those are my starting weapons over that are flashing. I start with one of those three, uh, or four weapons rather. If I start as a poet, you consider it like a wizard almost. I'm going to have a higher magical attack. I'm going to have lower strength and lower luck. And then I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to start with any number of different spells and so on and so forth. I find the poet tends to be a little bit more of a difficult start. And the reason for that is because spells don't necessarily, or aren't necessarily all that great. And if you don't start with a really offensive spell, you could, uh, you could hurt yourself in the long run. We'll actually go ahead and use poet. Now, you know, let's use bully. It's a little simpler to explain early on. Once you pick your class, you are then presented with six variations of that class, all of which are randomly generated on the spot. All their stats, their weapons, uh, their traits, everything is randomly generated. So, for instance, if we take a look at this person right here, Darla Martum, she starts with four health, as you can see at the bottom, uh, two magical energy. She has the trait defensive, good with daggers, sneaky, and clumsy. So, she has three pretty freaking good traits and one bad one. Clumsy is uh, a higher chance to trip over rocks uh, which can stall you or even put you in a very weak position should an enemy be nearby but luckily she can be sneaky she's good with daggers and she's defensive so she's kind of roguelike on the right hand side it shows you what her starting gear will be uh, she'll start with a, a regular helm a clean curious a dagger a weak shield and some boots and then if we go over to say this person all the way over here how about this guy he's got five health uh, he starts with a magical weapon uh, but he hates hammers, he's a bad swimmer, and he's a messy eater. All of those are pretty negative. So overall, he's a pretty negative start. On the bonus side, he has one extra health than, say, Darla over here. And he has one extra mana than, say, Darla over here. And he's starting with uh, a smooth chainmail, buzzing stick for a weapon, and boots. Uh, no item or no spells to start out with. As this guy will actually start with the Nikki Potion. I think you get the idea. They all start with randomly generated stuff. And, of course, on the left-hand side is their base stats, so... Uh, Darla starts with 1 to 4 strength, which is, it's randomized. Defense of 0, to speed of 3, uh, plus 2 for having one of the, uh, traits over there. Uh, magic of 2, intelligence of, of 3, and then luck of 3. So, you know what? I think Darla's a pretty overall, a well-rounded character. We'll go ahead and start with her. And, uh, then the game drops you right into the, uh, the game itself. And, obviously, it's a pixelated game. Uh, for all those who say pixelated art is not art, it's stupid, it looks dumb, I beg to differ. I love pixel art, and if it's done well, it can look really awesome. Uh, that is a mushroom that I got confused about. So, how does this work? Well, it's, it's like other roguelikes. You start in a level, and your goal is to find the exit to this level to go down to the next one, which then becomes harder and more challenging. Um, at each level, there's something called a leveling orb, which will allow you to up one stat and pick a uh, active ability or up two stats, depending on what you choose in the beginning. Um, I would also highly recommend, and I do mean highly recommend, playing with a controller, because playing with a keyboard is nigh impossible. At least I've found it to be so. Uh, I don't know what this is actually. The trap teleports you to discover something. So this is actually pretty good. All right, there's nothing up here. Um, that's kind of cool. I haven't come across that yet. Ooh, all right. Um, anyway, the keyboard is nigh impossible. It actually has you move with the arrow keys and then uses ZXC 
as the attack, jump, and item usage button. So, what really differentiates Catacomb Kids apart? Um, well, honestly, uh, there's a lot going on here that's really interesting and really fun. I find that Catacomb Kids is all about uh, the interaction of different items. We can actually go ahead and pick this chest up, by the way, and open it. We can just hold down the B button and do it. Dropped a piece of gear that's going to give us lower speed and lower defense, but higher strength, higher magic, higher intelligence. I'm actually going to leave that because I want to make sure my defense is pretty freaking high. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot. This this game is one of the few games that, ex uh, whoop, there's a trap there, that really encourages experimentation. For instance, when you pick up a potion, as I just did, you don't know what that potion does until you do one of two things with it. You drink it and you can find out which could kill you if it's a bad potion. Or you can be uh, a little bit more cautious and you can use it against an enemy. For instance, ooh, this is a, we can jump on that. For instance, here's a little slime over here. Let's use this uh, potion on the slime and see what we can do with it, see what it does. Uh, so the, oh, that's also something I wanna talk about too, but we'll go ahead and do that. It, ah, oh, God damn it, I'm dead, I'm dead. So what happened there, Mathis? All right, well, so we found out that the potion was poison. Uh, when I threw it at the enemy, it said poison. What unfortunately happened is the poison touched the torch, which then caused a chain reaction of catching the poison on fire. And unfortunately, it was right under the torch, so that flaming poison that splashed out landed on me and burned me to death. That sucked. And uh, that'll happen a lot in Catacomb Kids. Uh, the Catacomb Kids is very difficult. It's a very, very tough game. And uh, really does kind of hold no bars. You have to be very, very careful. There's a lot of spelunky elements in that. You have to be very, very cautious about what you do. Um, and you have to make sure that you are always a few good steps back before you do anything uh, really kind of risky. Uh, you can jump on enemies, by the way. So something I wanted to point out, unfortunately I didn't get to point out um, in, the, in the last run there, was uh, how the longer I held my potion, the more I was getting a little bit of information out of it, which you can then use to divine what it may or may not do. Uh, for instance, it said it was cool to, to, to the touch. I was holding it for a while, and it then told me that, hey, this uh, potion is cool to the touch. Um, that could have told me, hey, maybe it's a, uh, it's a frost potion of some sort. Um, what it definitely did was allow me to know that it wasn't some sort of fire potion. Usually fire potions are hot to the touch. Um, but hey, poison means, you know, it's not necessarily gonna be hot, it's gonna be cool as well. Then again, it wasn't cold to the touch either, so maybe I should have taken that into account. You might also notice that uh, the game itself uh, has a lot of traps lying around. It's very hard to see where traps are, and there's a lot of quick reactions that need to be had uh, in the game. For instance, if you step on a trap, let's go ahead and use that. Oop, I hate that. If you step, if you step on a trap, uh, you'll have the ability, it'll, it'll say click, and you'll have a few moments to get out of the trap's way, should it, um, oh, all right, there we go, he's dead. Uh, should it typically crush you, hit you with spikes, do all kinds of different things, and uh, yeah, generally just be bad news bears. Um, also, you know, might have noticed I picked up this, this ball of goo, and I put it here. Uh, this is another interaction that you kind of get to discover over time. If you end up, like, throwing a ball of goo against a wall, maybe there's, a, like, a secret passage way up high that you can't reach. If you get a ball of goo, you can actually jump on that ball of goo and use it to uh, stick. Also, you might have noticed my character sneeze. That's one of his traits. Actually, if we hit the start button, we might take a look at his traits here. Uh, no. Well, he sneezed, so th that's one of his traits. I forget what it's called. Allergies or some shit. I think it'll do it. I'm too good. Oh no, that was my up down up taunt. Hey, okay, cool. That's my special taunt. I'm That's what he did. Good. I thought it was like a trait that made him sneeze or, or whatnot. Uh, all right, so let's move on. Whoa, no, see traps, traps, traps. There we go, right there. So, how would I get through that, Matt? This that, that seems ridiculous. Ooh. Um, luckily, there is a sprinting mechanic uh, by double tapping, and if I double tap and then hit left trigger, I can roll as well, um, which will allow me to get through certain areas. All right, so there's a potion here. And let's uh, let's see what we can figure out what this potion does. Maybe it'll tell us if what its temperature is sooner rather than later. Uh, there's also a couple slimes up here. Slimes are kind of a pain in the ass. I failed. You identified the crimson potion as the potion of lightning. Uh, I found that out because it looks like we have a slime that now has a lightning property down here, which is kind of a problem. Um, but we got we took care of it. We can also high jump by holding down down and hitting the jump button. And there's a chest right here. So you might be like, well, I don't understand then. Uh, how come? Oh, this is actually really good. 
You tell me that, you know, you, you like it pretty much, but there's some sticking points. So, let me talk about the sticking points a little bit, and then we'll just go ahead and play so you can see the game in action. One of the biggest things... Oh, there's the exit right there, by the way. One of the... Oh, how am I supposed to get to that? So, there are piranhas down there, and piranhas are bad news bears. Um, they will just eat me up faster than I can do anything about it. Uh, anyway, so with roguelikes and platformers like this in general, one of the big things that needs to happen, one of the big, 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 big necessity... Ow, I'm dead. One of the big, big necessities is the uh, knee... I'm sprinting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why is the button that I was using before to roll not there? Uh, weird. Let's try something. Alright, I can't roll. I'm not sure why. It used to be left trigger. Maybe he just can't roll and I just don't realize it. Uh, anyway. Ooh. We're gonna have to... Alright, you know what? Let's go through here. What this does, if you go through the, uh, the door you came through, you'll find another way, which, I, as far as I understand, just reloads the level and gives you a different layout. Um... Anyway, let me, let me focus here a little bit. So, again, one of the big sticky points, as I've tried to say like three or four times, of a roguelike is incredibly responsive controls. It's necessary, especially in a game like this where it requires you to react at a moment's notice. You flip a switch, it says click, and you have maybe two seconds to move before something bad happens. Whoa, okay. I did not mean to do that. Oh, well. Oh, that was me, I think, tripping at one point, too. All right, well, that's fine. We'll go ahead and reroll. Unfortunately for Catacomb Kids, at least so far, I found myself not really having the controllers work with me as well as they could. And, well, what do you mean by that, Mathis? That makes no sense. So, <laughs> I've had, on more than one occasion, um, I don't, yeah, I gotta figure out what it is. On more than one occasion, have had the game not actually fuck me over, but get stuck, uh, because there is this mechanic of climbing walls and stuff, maybe I don't necessarily mean to climb on this wall, but my character ends up sticking to it. And this is just a ladder. I shouldn't really be using this as a ladder. But if I get near an edge and I want to fall and I'm accidentally holding over, uh, the thing will climb up automatically. The other things, such as... Uh, let me drop that for now before I talk about spells. The other problems that I have with the game are... Um, it took me a little while to really kind of kind of feel out, I guess, the physics of the game. Because there are physics of this game. Uh, enemies kind of bounce around in a particular way. Certain enemies bounce around in a particular way. And those physics can be a little bit misleading and a little confusing. And I hope to show you what I mean by that uh, later on. But the most important thing, and the thing that I've had the biggest problem with so far, is that sometimes when I press a weapon, or press a weapon, press a button, the thing that I'm telling it to do, and the thing that it does, can be delayed. Uh, I've had pre moments where I swear I've pressed jump and my character hasn't jumped. I've had moments where I swear I've swung a weapon and he's swung it a little bit late. There seems to be a slight delay every so often when you're actually using uh, the weapons or just trying to input a command at all. Um, oh, this is a dead mouse. So he's actually standing on the trap button here, which you might be wondering what's going on. So he got squished by this thing and he's now permanently stuck in this area unless I pick him up. And now the trap is uh, permanently set off, which is good. Um, so that's a huge problem. If if the game itself is not allowing you to do what you tell it to do, and trust me, I've played games that are super responsive, and Catacomb Kibs is not really as responsive as I'd like it to be, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. And it can kill you. And if the game is killing you because of bad mechanics, then that needs to be addressed before the game officially releases. Now, of course, this is early access. What does that mean? Well, it can be fixed, it can be changed, things can go in a different direction over time. Um, this is a melting ball of slime because I hit it with a fire attack and the ball of slime eventually melted. Uh, that means it can be changed over time because it is early access. I just want it to be known that if you do end up picking up this game, there is a little bit of a problem with certain controls. Sometimes you do one thing and it doesn't necessarily do what you meant it to do or sometimes it doesn't do anything at all. Uh, and that is a huge, huge, huge problem. Also, level design, I mean, I've only made it, this game is hard, I've only made it to the first two levels. I can't really comment on level design, unfortunately. I'd like to tell you if the game looks great later on, but I can't make it past the second dungeon without getting killed. Alright, let's talk about spells a little bit. So here's a book. 
A book is a magic thing. You can find books randomly displayed throughout the game, uh, and you can hold down B when you pick it up to use it. When you use it, you can then go learn a spell by going into your start menu and then going down here. Also, start menu, or there's this little menu here, is a little bit confusing. I don't like these symbols. I don't know. They're not as clear as they could be. But now that I look at it, this is clearly a lightning bolt. This is clearly armor. I don't know what that is, and this is the magic book that I picked up. So you can go to this magic book, and now you can pick a spell out of uh, four spells that it gives you. Uh, randomly chosen for you at any given time. So when you pick a spell, it will then assign it to one of the bumpers. As you can see at the bottom, there's a few empty slots uh, at the bottom of the HUD. Uh, your, one of your, your first spell will go there. So here it says it costs two energy to use, which you could use. There's five charges of it. And it's Cloak of Shadow, or Shadow Cloak. Legends are told of the great assassin Hazaz Jin, who used the spell to disguise himself as a shadow on the wall. So I can vanish into shadows for a few seconds. Good to know. Vampirism has three energy and five charges. It restores health by attacking foes. And that could be very useful. Plague, summon a cloud of miasma that poisons and slows enemies. And then raise dead. Uh, raise a humanoid corpse to follow you. That could be cool. Its instructions can only be described with blood. Uh, also, one of the cool things I really like about this is that uh, the uh, each spell has their own unique, very cool, uh, interesting little lore blob blip with it. I think it's cool. Uh, you know what? Let's take... Let's for fun. Let's. I usually take something practical. Let's take uh, raise dead. So now, if we use left bumper, we can raise dead. Let's go ahead and do it. Spell failed. Um, I might only have three out of the four pips that I need for it. Interesting. All right, let's pick this purple potion up. All right. Well, all right, that was a. Oh god. All right. See what I mean? Oh, do you see that black orb bobbing up and down over on the right hand side? Uh, that is a leveling up orb. The problem is. It's guarded by an enemy that is incredibly tough. These guys, depending on your health, can one-shot you, typically two-shot you if you're smart about it. Okay, oh, and I'm dead. Fuck! And I couldn't, I got the orb, but I couldn't do anything with it. I tried to snatch the orb and run off. It didn't work. All right, let's try it one more time here. And uh, we'll play, you know, we'll play as a poet. We'll mess around with the, as a poet for a bit. We want someone with really high magical energy. Look at this guy. Starts with magical combat book and the push ability. Uh, so we have to hope that magical combat has something good. Wizard throw, push, slow. Vampirism in a fire and ice book. You know what? That sounds really way way better. Let's take that one because we're gonna have fire and ice uh, Book and the vampirism is an attack spell. So at the very least we'll have that um, We'll go ahead and use this book. So let's go ahead and use it And uh, we'll see what we can pick up off this so flame wave and furnace uh, Which is summon a wave of fire that an foes ignite nearby ground and burn enemies and then we got a couple of spell uh, frost ones Let's go ahead and, and send a wave forward. I think that's really cool. So left bumper, right bumper is what we're going to need. Be very careful. Looks like we have ourselves an axe, so it's probably not all that useful. Kill that mushroom. As you can see, we're only doing one or two damage at most with our axe. Our, our strength and our attack is really bad. It's not good at all. Well, that worked actually really nicely. See you later. He's just gonna burn to death. That was excellent. Um, and our energy recharges, which is awesome. So one of the cool things you can do with bodies, by the way, and something I actually neglected to talk about, because there's a lot going on here. As, you, as I said, there's a lot of interaction that you need to do uh, with this game to, to kind of discover everything. So when an enemy dies, uh, if they leave a corpse behind, you can pick it up and drop it. But most importantly, he's charred because I burned him. You can actually eat enemies. Mmm, I ate it. You pick the meat from the charred grumble corpse's bones. And then it leaves bones. Now, I could eat this guy as well if I really wanted to, which will attempt, probably hurt me. Uh, but he'll drop his armor, which is kind of cool. Um, so what is the purpose of eating enemies, Mathis? It doesn't heal you. You're right. It doesn't heal me. What it does do, though, is if I eat enough of a certain enemy, I could gain an interesting perk or trait from that enemy, depending on what enemy I eat a lot of. Woo! That was actually a burning potion. I am so glad I threw that at the enemies. Oh, God. I almost got damaged there. <laughs> um... Yes, so, there is, there is, you know, there is something to be said about experimenting with potions and stuff. And now we know this is Potion of, of Flames, too, by the way, because we used one already. Um, we can just go ahead and go, eh. Okay, that did not work as well as I'd hoped. We can actually go ahead and eat these bats. Let's see, there's actually a lot of bats here. We're going to go ahead and eat the bats. All right, we got two extra charges now. Awesome. So, that was the bonus of eating a bunch of bats. Uh, our magical charges went up. Uh, for our spells. If you can see, they're back up to five. So eating enough bats has done that. 
and allowed us to do that. Now, we eat a charred bat that's at the bottom left. You can see something about a bat symbol over there. I wonder what that'll do after we do uh, enough. Let's go ahead and uh, smoldering dry bat. You munch it. Yeah, so we've eaten two out of the five that I want. Let's try and, and actually do this. That was uh, a miss. Oh, he's going to burn. Oh, no. He set me on fire. What a dick. And I'm dead. He hit me, and he killed me because I set him on fire. But, yes, there's experimentation involved with wanting to try and kill enemies and uh, learn and eat their corpses to see what happens if you do it a bunch of times. Um, all right. Let's try one more poet run, and I think then we'll wrap it up. Uh, this guy looks good. Magical combat. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. He has slow. Slow is not that great, but it could be useful. Um, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll immediately go use magical combat. And see if we get anything good out of magical combat here. Air dash. If you use seven charges. It uses two energy. If a feat of pure combat excellence. Leave your foes stunned as you rush through them. So it doesn't do any damage. Break potions and bridges. Damage and equipment. Break potions and bridges. Damage equipment. Used to only crush and destroy the spell subjects. Nearby creatures and immense force. Oh, okay. So I can crush enemies. Poison blob. Launch a bouncing ball of poison. This one seems like the most useful. Because it has five charges. Before I need to recharge. So we'll go ahead and use learn poison blob. We have slow and poison blob now. We have a cool crown it looks like. Go ahead and kill him off. There's a potion here. Let's see if we could do anything with the gold potion. Bring it down a bit. See what's going on. Ooh, two slimes. Also known as experiment subjects. Ow, I just jumped into the spikes. God damn it. I didn't mean to do that. Alright, one more. One more, one more. Magic in motion, haste, haste, shadow cloak is useful, haste, haste, poison blob. Take poison blob, guy. I'm picking purely on spells at this point, because I would need something that's going to be a little bit more offensive here. Good. Wizard throw, magic blast, that sounds good. Let's try magic blast out. I'm just going to do, I'm assuming, a blast of magic. Let's also go ahead and pick up the skull, because we can use this to set off traps if we see them. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do, I made some noise there. It was one of my bad features. Put that, oh, I was hoping to put the skull there and keep it sent off, but that's fine. Blah, poison bolt, and then we hit him with our weapon, and now we have a, a little ball of slime that we could pick up, and it's poison, it's a poison ball of goo. So we hit it with a poison spell, and now we've, uh, we've actually made it into poison. He is actually getting poison from the poison ball of goo, and now he's dead. Good. Good to know. This is, uh, literally does nothing at all for us, so let's move. Whoa. Okay. Uh, he can roll. It must have been the other guys who couldn't roll. It must have been a feat of theirs. Like I said, uh, sometimes the feats are evade me a little bit. I want to keep him kind of a good distance from me. See, the skull is holding that trap down for us, which is great. Ooh, and another book. Deadly Distance. Please and thank you. Let's see what this does. Uh, we've got Wizard Throw again, which is a hand I can throw enemies, which I've had before, and it's okay. We already have this, but this will give me two extra charges. Whirlwind. Summon a Whirlwind. You know what? Let's actually take this again and give ourselves two extra charges of it. Oh, I can't. Oh, I have no points. Oh, I need points before I could take it. Damn it, man. I didn't know that. Alright, so that's something new I learned. Because I've never gotten really far with uh, poets before. So let's stow the magic 101 for now. We need more points, which I'm assuming we'll get from an orb of leveling. That's the exit, and I could go down the next floor. But I want to see if I can find the orb of leveling first. I gotta find out where it possibly is. So let's roll here. We'll do a high jump. High jump, roll. You can kind of see the buttons. They're a little bit hard to see, but you can see them. More gold. Up here. It's, it's got to be over this way, right? Like, this is the only place we haven't explored. Yeah, it's got to be. Come here, you slime. We'll tack up. There we go. Ball of slime in case we wanted to access some area. This is very scary. This is actually good because I can push this down here and I can use that to walk on it later if I need it. Okay, I had a feeling that was spikes, but I wanted to make sure. 
That was not what I was hoping to do, but that's fine. I'll pick it back up. I hear it. There it is. Okay, cool. So we can actually go ahead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. God damn it. Oh, that guy heard me. I was above him, but he saw the little sound waves go out and he heard me, so he came up. Ugh. Like I said, Catacomb Kids is really hard. Final thoughts on the game are, so far, it's actually... It's, it's in pretty good condition. There's some small gripes I have um, with it, as particularly with the controls, but overall, I like it. I think it's a pretty cool game that I, it took me a little while to like, but I definitely have grown to like it over time and has a lot of potential. It's really unique in what it's trying to do and it's, it's key feature that I think it really needs to maintain the core of and really emphasize is the experimentation. Experimenting with everything, setting balls of goo on fire, poisoning the balls of goo and using them to hurt your enemies, uh, spells that interact with other elements of the environment to do cool things. That is gonna be the crux of what makes this game great. And if they can really, really make that a selling feature, do more with it, there's already a lot there, but make it even bigger, make it the real central focus of the game, I think this has a, a big chance to be a very successful hit on Steam when it launches. So go check it out, guys. Catacomb Kids of the Steam. The link to the Steam page will be in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this under the hood look. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.